Hi crochet friends, today I'm going to be showing you my pattern for these adorable frogs wearing sweaters. I couldn't find a pattern anywhere for these, so here's mine. So these are some of the materials you need for this project. So obviously some green. This is a acrylic wool blend, I think, and it works pretty well, but you can use any size of yarn. Something for the sweater. I'm probably not going to use this brown, but this is what I used for the last frog. And then I'm using white cotton for like the white part of the frog, but you can use any white yarn again. I'm not sure why. There's hair all over it. That's kind of gross. But also I'm using 12 millimeter safety eyes. You can use smaller ones, but I think these ones look really cute. And then hooks, obviously I'm going to use this, I think 4.5 and then maybe this 5.5. Okay, a few disclaimers before we get started. This is in real time, so if I do mess up or anything, that is why. Also, I am filming with a contraption that is not a tripod because I left my tripod at university and I'm home for reading week at the moment. So, if the camera changes, I'm very sorry. It is annoying me too, I promise. Anyway, I'm also reading off of my instructions here of my pattern that I created myself. It is not a beginner pattern, but it should be pretty easy to follow along with what I'm doing in real time. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just a slip knot, as per usual. And then we're gonna chain three. And we're gonna do two increases in these two stitches. I really don't like crocheting through a camera which is why I hardly make tutorials but this one I thought was much needed because I couldn't find any crochet patterns out there that were free. I found a couple knitted ones but I don't knit so <laughs> I decided to make my own. That is what it should be looking like right there. I'm not gonna bother to weave this string in just because usually I do as I go but in this case I feel like that's just too small to do so. And we can tuck this into the body easily. I'm not selling this or anything. If you have a different way of doing things, no problem. Anyway, we are going to chain one, as always, to turn it around. And then I'm going to do a single crochet into each of the four stitches here. Pretty easy. It's just to make that like strange, like I guess belly shape of the frog. And it's mouth, of course, so this is the final stitch. It's kind of tight. It'll be hard to get into, but that's all right. Anyway, there is the four stitches. If I'm also unraveling my yarn throughout this, I apologize, but maybe you're unraveling yours too. So it should work out just fine. The next thing we're doing, always chain one to turn and then we're doing a single crochet, two increases, and then another single crochet. So in the first stitch right here, just one single crochet. In these two, an increase. This is to create like the rounder stomach shape. This white part actually gave me the most difficulty when creating the pattern because I wanted it to be the perfect shape. There are my two increases. And then in this last one, we're just doing one single crochet. There we go. That This is like the uh, the bottom part of the stomach. The top part will be a little bit more rounded for the mouth. Um, anyway, we'll see that when it comes. So chain one as always. And we are going to do a row of single crochet in each. So easy enough. You guys should know how to do this. We're just doing one, two three, four, five. Hello, this is Fiona editing this. I'm very sorry for being out of frame in this specific moment. I think it happens a lot because of the tripod and like setup I was using. I'm also not the best at filming tutorials, but again, I really hope this pattern is worth it for you guys and my verbal instructions are enough if I ever do 
slip out of frame again apologies six single crochets across should look like that and then the next thing we're doing is another increase row so chain one and we're going to start with an increase this time And then a normal single crochet. Sorry if I keep going out of frame. I'm really sorry. I'm trying to look underneath the camera. And then another increase. This is a pattern if you can't tell. And then another single crochet. So we're just single crochet increase all the way across. Or I guess vice versa. And you're going to end on a regular single crochet for this row. Like that. Perfect. Looks great so far. Okay, and then the next row is another one of my favorites where we just single crochet all the way across. This one has one, oops, <laughs> two, Ugh, I hate when cotton yarn splits like this. It's such a nightmare. Let's try it again. Again, I don't know if you should necessarily use cotton for the stomach. It's just what I have lying around for white. So we've got one two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine single crochets across. And this is the widest part of the frog's stomach i think if i'm not mistaken so i have a feeling the camera has been shifting slightly the entire time i've been filming which makes me a little bit annoyed but we're working with what we've got here at home <laughs> all right so the next row is actually decreased row so that is exciting because it means we are getting to the finish line here so we're gonna do chain one as always and then the first thing we're doing is decrease. So I do my decreases by pulling up a loop, going into the next one, pulling up a loop, and then going through two. It's not an invisible decrease, but you don't need to do invisible decrease for this pattern unless you feel so inclined. And we're doing a normal single crochet and then another decrease all the way across. So decrease single crochet all the way across. This is just to like make it again rounder and have some body rather than just being a flat piece and we're ending on a regular single crochet again so as you can see it kind of curves a little bit that's what we want so next we're doing three rows of one single crochet in each so single or what am i saying chain one and then i'm gonna do my three rows of regular single crochet off camera because Although this is a real-time tutorial, I don't think you need to see me do that in real time, but I could be wrong. Okay, so the next part of the pattern is very easy. So we're just doing another row of decrease, single crochet, decrease. So starting with a decrease and then a single crochet and then a decrease and then finishing with a single crochet and chaining one as always so this is what it should be looking like we are now going to do another three rows of one single crochet in each so just single crocheting all the way across shouldn't take me too long here so i am going to do it in real time oh of course i screw up just as i'm saying that anyway this is obviously a lot less small than the bottom part because it is the frog's mouth which i wanted to have a little bit more of a round wider form to it you'll see in the end what that is meant to look like oh my goodness i hate cotton yarn i remember making dishcloths and like having this problem all the time where it would be splitting okay this is the last row of one in each my stitches are getting very messy because I'm rushing but it's okay it's just the stomach part actually 
You know what? I think I'm wrong. I think I did this as the mouth last time. Disregard everything I've said about this being the mouth because this is too flat. See? It got this nice U shape up here for its mouth. So that is the stomach all complete. So you are now a good percent of the way into making this cute little frog in a sweater. I'm going to grab my green and just do one quick cut here with my scissors that I do not have readily available, of course. So here I just chained one as I usually do. And then I'm going to cut them with this nail scissors because I couldn't find any of my actual crochet scissors. So this does not need to be long because we're going to end up hiding it later on anyway. Just like so. Then you can set this part aside and we can move on to the green part. So for this part, I'm actually going to be using the wrong size of hook because I want the parts of the frog to match in thickness in a way so i found that this works it is going to be kind of annoying when it splits a few times but we will get through that <laughs> so the green part we are not going to cut the yarn at the end just so everybody knows um just because it's it's not no so but it is minimal so in terms of the project so we're starting with a slip knot as always and four chains so this part is just a slightly bigger version of the white stomach there we've got four and we're gonna do increases in these three so we always kind of start in the second chain from the hook for the very first round I don't think that the hook size really impacts the size or of your project or anything like it kind of does when you're using plush yarn but like in this case I just think it looks a lot tighter and neater with this size and this thickness of yarn especially when compared to the white so I turn my work and we're just gonna do a single crochet in each so one two three, four, five, these ones are tight, and six, and this weird last one that I'm not a fan of, especially not with this hook. Okay, like so. Chain one. And the next row is an increase row, so we are doing two in- oh, sorry, two single crochets. So one and two, and then two increases. So here's one increase, and then another one right here. And then we're doing two more single crochets into the last two chains or stitches i suppose would be a better word that is how it should be looking i'm going to move this bag of eyes because it keeps crinkling and i'm moving my ipad into the frame because my camera is slipping okay i'm just loving this color it looks so good anyway the next row is a regular single crochet row so we're just doing one in each one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Chain one. And the next row is another increase row. So we're starting with an increase in this first one from the hook. I was very out of frame there, wasn't I? <laughs> okay, so one increase and then we're doing a single crochet in the next, an increase in the next, and we continue this down the row. Single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, 
and we're ending on a regular single crochet like that chain one and that is the widest part of the frog right there we are doing a regular row of single now just one in each this is three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve we're chaining one and now we're gonna start on the increase or the decrease rounds my bad decrease rows rather so we're starting with one decrease just like the white part like this pull through both and then a single and then a decrease and then a single and we're doing this evidently all the way down decrease single crochet decrease and we're ending on a single crochet right here and a chain one just like that now we are doing another row of the very same thing so we're doing a decrease single crochet decrease single crochet make sure we go through both loops there Fiona <laughs> decrease and then finally a single crochet see what it's doing here it's like turning inward a little bit I'll show you like a little arched look and it's kind of popping out in the middle here that's what we want because we're forming the frog's stomach at the moment or it's back rather so we want to give it some body just so it's not like a flat piece you know what i mean so chain one and the next thing we're doing is five rows of one single crochet in each stitch so i'm gonna do these off camera as usual all right so the camera angle has definitely changed um but I do think I have it a lot more secure now, so it shouldn't change anymore. I did take my phone out to go my phone, though, <laughs> in between clips. But this is what the frog should be looking like so far. This is its back, and then this will be its face eventually. So the next part I did not write down instructions for. I'm going to be real real with you. But we're basically combining these two elements of the frog together. So it's an exciting part but you're gonna need to bear with me. So to attach these two pieces, I have the round part of the white body and the flat part that we just finished um, of the green. So not cutting off the green, we're gonna flip it so it looks like this. And then bear with me here because I don't completely remember what I did and I didn't write down word instructions but we're gonna try and make the mouth like overhang so start by doing just a slip stitch to secure both pieces together and it is going to be a little bit backwards for a second and then aligning the top of this and this <laughs> this and this i'm such a good explainer we are gonna actually i would suggest you chain one here just so that it's not all flipped like that aligning those two rows we're gonna slip stitch and i'm gonna do it into the backs of these stitches just to get the least amount of showing possible you do not have to do this in an, if you don't want to but I'm going to so we're just going to go into like the backs here just like one or two loops it really doesn't matter again this is not an exact science this is just what i found makes the frog look the most realistic 
I have somehow split my yarn. The patience crocheting requires sometimes is insane. Everyone thinks it's such a relaxing activity. It's really not. We all know this. It can sometimes be stress inducing. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going here. Okay. I'm gonna leave this white end alone for now. I really don't care about it, but if you care about ends more than I do, you can feel free to weave it into the white piece, the green, whatever you feel most inclined to do. So you'll see once we flip this around that it looks correct. I know it's kind of crazy right now at the moment, but I will show you. Okay, so it looks something like this. I'm gonna do one more into like the side of it so we get a nice rounded mouth. And then you can see here, we have this lip of the frog, like so. And now is the time that we sew the pieces together. So if you want to, you can put in your eyes right now. I think I'm gonna do that. And then we can start to do the single crochets and it will look more symmetrical once we do that. All right, I've gathered my 12 millimeter safety eyes here. And the science of putting these in is not exact as most of this frog is, but I'm gonna show you what I like to do. The one time I've made this frog, I'm gonna show you what I like to do. <laughs> anyway, um, I fold it down like this. We're gonna try and envision what the frog's going to look like in the end. So his mouth. I'm gonna put the eyes in this row here. So right on the edge as well. I think that looks like a good placement for the first one, so I'm gonna secure it. Again, if it looks a little bit wonky, these guys are supposed to look homemade. Like, in the best way possible, they're supposed to look homemade. As every crochet thing kind of is, but like, specifically this type of like, style, I feel. We're just gonna put this one across from the other one. The other one I made, like, kind of is not even even, but that, to me, looks about right. Again, if you want to use bigger, smaller eyes, different placement, it's all up to you. Sorry, my leg is in the frame at the moment, but I'm just trying to show you as close up as possible. So, that is what the eyes look like all attached, and I think it looks really, really cute. The next part of the frog is the arms and legs and also obviously attaching the parts of the body together. So what I do for this so that we don't go from green to white because that can make some like obvious stitches is I'm going to slip stitch along the top of the mouth only. So the green part, not the white part. This also will help make that like lip more defined if that makes any sense. So slip stitching across the mouth and again i'm sorry but the eyes are gonna make this part just a little bit more challenging which is why you can wait if you want but i think most of you should be able to figure it out just fine okay so for this next step after we've slip stitch along the mouth we're gonna do single crochets to the right spot we want to put the arms so last time i did this i did not count or anything because i really don't think it's an exact science but I do think we're gonna place it somewhere around here where the pieces expand to like their fullest point. That looks like around where the arms should go, I'd say. But again, you can put them wherever you want. Give your frog some character. So we are just gonna single crochet these two pieces together. Try and cover as much white as you can so you can leave these looser if you feel so inclined. I feel like I've said that a lot in this video. I'm very sorry. I sound dorky. Uh oh, I can tell we're gonna split there. Again, you can do this however you feel is best because I am no pro. I just came up with this pattern because I have a lot of experience, but when it comes to the actual techniques, 
and obviously filming, as you can see here with the terrible camera angle, I am not a professional, but I don't claim to be, so that's fine. I'm just gonna pick up as little of this white as possible without it being too much of a challenge because this is cotton yarn and it can be very stubborn. And we're gonna single, ugh, it keeps on splitting. Single and hmm, I think I'm gonna do one more single crochet before I do my arm. I promise the arms are not as daunting as they look and they are the same uh, type of arm I do for my leggy frogs, which you probably saw when it was around market season and me and Shay were making a lot of market videos. They were one of our best sellers, but this is just more of like a realistic version of him, I guess. So I am just going to do my arm right here, I think. So what we start with is a single crochet, which I have clearly already done. And now we're going to chain 11. So this can differ if you want your arms to be longer, shorter, whatever you want. But I'm just going to do 11 because that's what I found is best. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. That's what it looks like so far. And then we are going to do the toes or the fingers, I guess, in this case. So into the second chain from the hook, we are going to slip stitch one, two, and three. This is the first finger. Now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, slip stitch in the chain immediately from the hook which can be kind of challenging i know one i screwed that up didn't i if you want it to be easier you can do four chains which i, I think what i'm gonna do so i've screwed up my other finger now i'm gonna show this multiple times so don't worry about it one two three four this is a lot easier so you don't have to worry about getting right into that immediate stitch from the hook and a third one here we're gonna chain four one more time second chain from the hook we're gonna slip stitch one two and three so we have three fingers here so cute we're going to do a slip stitch into this first finger and then this is optional but to make it curve inward more i always do a slip stitch into this first slip stitch of the first finger just it makes it like close up more i'm not sure how to explain it i just like it to look a little bit more complete and we are now just going to slip stitch down the rest of the arm which you can see my yarn's a little bit in the way, but this is just how I always do it. It's not going to make it look funky or anything. So slip stitch down the rest of the arm. Needed some more yarn there. So as you can see, it wasn't too difficult and you get a really cute little hand out of it. It's the same for the feet, the legs. They're just a little bit longer which I'm about to show. So once we get to the last one right here, we're gonna single crochet to finish off that arm. So do a single crochet to finish right there. Isn't that just adorable? Now, we're going to keep single crocheting until we get down to where we want to place our foot. So just making sure that your white and green pieces are aligned and single crochet them together. I like single crochets more than slip stitches for this just because it covers any like white seam we might get. And it just makes it look neater in my opinion. This is the part of the pattern that I would consider to be no-sew. 
although we are technically sewing two pieces together, I find that the hands, not having to make them separately, is just like ultimate convenience. And I love anything that is more convenient when it comes to crocheting an animal with like limbs and everything. So, oops, we accidentally slip stitched there. So, as you can see, it's gonna like puff out a little bit, which is exactly what we want. I'm now going to chain 13 for the legs to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, oops, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. We're gonna do the same type of foot as we did our hand. So a slip stitch into the next three, starting in the second chain from the hook. And three, chain four, one, two, three, four, slip stitch one, two, and three. I feel like I sound like a dance teacher. <laughs> chain one, two, three, four, slip stitch one, two, and three. And then we slip stitch back into the first finger like so, and I always do one into the first finger to close up the hand. And this is our foot. So we're gonna just slip stitch back down the rest of the leg here. One, two, not gonna count anymore because that's annoying. <laughs> Welcome to the most chaotic, you, uh, crochet tutorial on YouTube. Just as I was saying that, it, I literally messed up my words. That shows how chaotic it is. But I do hope it's helpful for you guys because I was really bummed when I couldn't find a pattern for this anywhere. And to finish, we are going to single crochet one, like so, to complete his leg. I am going to tuck these strings in. I know I should be weaving them in, but Honestly, when I'm not selling something, I don't bother. If it's just for me or a friend, like, I I really don't care. I hate weaving in ends. I feel like that's probably pretty common in the crochet community. So that is what this side of the frog looks like. I'm going to do the other leg off camera, and then I will come back once I'm doing this part, just to show you one more time how to do the arm, and then how to sew up this part. Just one more thing, obviously, I'm going to single crochet until I get to this stitch for the other leg. So we're just gonna do one, two, and three. This is where we're going to place the second leg. So this is what we've got now that I did the other leg off camera. And we are going to do a single crochet to finish off that leg. Once I cannot separate the cotton yarn, that drives me crazy. And single crochet, just like that. Now we are going to once again single crochet up the side of the frog until we reach the point symmetrical to the other arm of the froggy. So, just a few more, I think, until we get to this wider part. And one more. This part is always a little bit tricky. Okay, I'm actually gonna do one more, sorry. My bad. My bad, everyone. My goodness. I hate sewing stuff together, don't you guys? So, we're gonna do it right there. 
This one is chaining 11, contrary to the legs that are 13. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. We're going to do a slip stitch into the second chain from the hook, and then two more. One, two, so that's a total of three for the finger, chaining four. slip stitch one two and three chain one two three four slip stitch one two and three need some more yarn here all right, and then slip stitch into this opening. And then I always slip stitch one into the first finger, which makes it twist, but I also think it makes it look better. So worth it. Now we're slip stitching down the arm. So we get back to the body where we're going to do another single crochet, just like always. See, I told you the arms were fine, guys. Nobody was worried, I'm sure. But they do look a little bit daunting just because of this whole business. All right, so now we're going to single crochet. Oops. I just love working with two pieces. And a single crochet to finish that arm. Isn't he looking adorable? I think he just looks so cute. And this is where we're going to want to get stuffing to fill in this little gap here. So I'm going to go get that. Okay, I went and grabbed some stuffing from my sister because I, of course, forgot to bring mine home. I thought I didn't, but I definitely did. So we are just going to stuff the body little by little into the gap that we have left here. I'm very out of breath, I'm sorry. I just ran up and down the stairs <laughs> to get the sweater color I decided on. So as we do this, you really want to fill in the back part that is meant to be rounded. I'm sorry, I need to catch my breath. <laughs> Crochet or things, we are not athletes. Most of us. <laughs> I'm sure there's crochet athletes out there. Certainly not me. Okay. Just continuing to stuff it, mostly making sure to get down right to the bottom, which is just a little bit challenging with it already being somewhat sewn up. You can do whatever you need to do though to make it looking good. And I am gonna just do a few more single crochets to close it up a little bit more as we stuff here. This is just how I always stuff like pillows or any stuffed animal like in this shape. I kind of stuff a little, stitch it up, stuff a little, just so that the stuffing doesn't start coming out of the hole, because I hate that. Very inconvenient. All right, I'm gonna stuff some more in there if I can. My sister gave me a lot of stuffing. Very generous of her. Pulling out that loop so we don't lose it. <laughs> just stuffing it with my finger. I feel like this is kind of awkward to watch. Maybe I just shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Again, if you don't want to watch this in real time, you obviously can skip. That's the beauty of YouTube. We've got skips. When you simply double tap with your thumb. All right. I think that we're almost ready here. I think that looks good to me. You can kind of shape him nicely, like make his back a little bit wider like so. If you want his like chin to be bigger, you can do that. I just like mine looking like this. 
But again, as most things in this pattern, stuffing amount is up to you. Oh, I suppose I should probably tighten this back up first. I'm going to continue with my singles now. Okay, again, see what I mean with the stuffing coming through the hole? I find it quite annoying. Single crochet. This part is going to be hard because of the eye, but I'm going to go around it. Just do a really tight single crochet there. And then I'm just going to slip stitch up into the mouth so it looks as seamless as possible. And I'm going to chain one. And that is our frog guy all finished. Isn't he just adorable? So I changed one. We are going to use these nail scissors I found. Cut the yarn at a good length just so we can hide it nicely inside or you can weave it in again it is not my frog so you can do whatever you want with yours i'm just gonna weave it pretty deep into the back here there we go i'm just gonna hide it in here as best as i can again i'm not selling these right now so i'm not making the whole weaving in the ends thing perfect as I usually do when I'm making things just for myself or close friends that don't actually pay for them like gifts and everything people don't care if they get a string if they haven't paid for it <laughs> I certainly don't care and I definitely don't like the process of weaving things in unless I'm going to try and make it look professional <laughs> you know what I mean I feel like that's pretty relatable so we have our froggy all complete. Isn't it just so cute? I love the hands. I love them. And you can finish him off just like this if you prefer your frog without a sweater or any accessories. I've seen tons on social media with overalls. Um, I'm going to show you my sweater pattern today that I also created while designing this frog. And it's just the standard sweater. It's not striped or anything, but it would be very easy to make it striped. Someday I will probably do a tutorial on how to do that. But this is just going to be a standard one color one, just like I made with the brown for the first frog that you saw. I'm going to be using this orangey red color today for a little bit of a change. And because I think it's very fall and very cute. So moving on to the sweater, if you don't want your froggy to have a sweater that's totally fine you can stop the video right here so in the original pattern i made for the frog the back panel of the sweater was wider i am going to make it the same in this one just because i want the sweater to be tighter on him than the first frog that i made so if you do want more of a baggy sweater you can always add chains initially uh, just like everything, if you want any of it to be bigger, you just start with a bigger base. So that is just what I'm going to do because I want it to be more tighter fit this time. So first thing we're going to do is make the front panel. And this is going to be the same as the back panel now. So we're going to start by chaining five because we're making the rim, not with green. <laughs> we're making the rim, which I did a little ribbed like pattern for. And this is working with slip stitches, so it is going to be very annoying. I'm not even going to lie to you. So, starting with a slip knot, we're going to chain five. This yarn is going to split on me, I can already tell. Okay, there's five. We're going to do a slip stitch into each, starting at the second chain from the hook. Again, I'm not doing any stitch tutorials in this video because this is not necessarily a beginner tutorial. Not to say you can't do it if you're a beginner, but I'm not explaining how to do a split, slip stitch, how to do a single stitch, anything like that, just because that's not what this video is for. 
I do have a video where I explain those things though. If you are interested, I will link it somewhere. <laughs> okay, there are our first five slip stitches. Now we're going to slip stitch after we chain one. We're going to slip stitch into the back loops only. So that's these loops right here, the back loops. We're gonna do that until you reach your desired length for the front panel of the sweater. So I'm gonna do it till it's about this long and we will see how many rows I end up doing. I will get back to you with that, but we're gonna start by doing some of them together. You're going to have to bear with me for this because it is hard to get into these back loops, but I promise it's worth it. So into the first, actually, I don't, I'm not gonna um, come after you if you just do a regular slip stitch into the first, because it's very hard to get into. But you know, different people have different skill levels and mine's not very high, so <laughs> that's all right. We're gonna start with a normal slip stitch and now we're going to start our back loops only because it should be a little bit easier i hope perfect slip stitch slip stitch slip stitch and I'm just going to do a regular slip stitch into this last bit here just to make it easier. After this first row it should be a lot easier. Perfect. Chain one. We're going to continue all the way down just like that. I am not a fan of using this red yarn, as it turns out, especially not with this size of hook, but we're going to stick it out. And once we get a little bit further, you'll be able to tell that it's like becoming a ribbed pattern like a normal sweater might look like, which is what I was going for here. Realism, but cute also. That is what it should be looking like. So it's very small. I'm just gonna keep doing this until I reach my desired length and I will get back to you on how many rows that is exactly. All right, so our angle might have changed a little bit there, but I'm finished with the band of the sweater so far. And I have done around 12 rows for that. I'm just gonna trim this tail here so it's easier for us to weave in and now we're gonna crochet along the top of the band, like how a sweater would look. So we're gonna do single crochets along the top of the band. Again, does not need to be an exact science. It's just a sweater for a frog. That's three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We are going to weave this end into the next row. Again, this is optional. If you really don't want to do it, you don't have to, but I just find it a lot easier um, to do. So we are now going to do uh, around eight rows of single crochet. So 
again weaving in this end as we go just go all the way to the end of the row and we're gonna do this for around eight rows if you want your sweater bigger or smaller again like most of the pattern it's up to you I will be back when I'm done my eight rows I originally had done this pattern with a ribbed sweater like the whole thing being ribbed including this part but it looked a bit bulky so I redid it just with like a flat regular standard sweater for him I also have a feeling there's gonna be some people on this video maybe who are upset with the way I formatted it as in like it's a uh, real time but also no cut not no cuts like there is minimal cuts in it when I like go to do a bunch of rows but my explanation for you there is that this is the way I want to film my tutorials and I'm providing you with this pattern for free and no one else I've seen on the internet is doing that so you are getting my pattern for free and I'm happy to share it with you in whatever way I choose. And I don't think anybody's going to be mean about it. I'm just, sometimes people are picky about form of video and everything, especially with like crochet. I've noticed in the past, like if we say it's beginner and they don't think it's beginner enough or things like that, people sometimes get annoyed, but I always have an explanation for them. So no biggie. Also, if it's not the most organized tutorial, again, you're getting my pattern for free. So, it's fine. So, this is three rows done. Out of eight, I'm going to come back once I've done all eight. All right, I'm back with my eight rows all done. And we can see that compared to the frog's body, it's going to be just around here. And there's also a neckline on this sweater. So it's looking pretty cute so far. And now, because I'm modifying the pattern slightly, that these panels are the same size, I am going to make one of these pieces exactly the same. And if you want, I will timestamp the video so you can go back and rewatch the tutorial for that. But I am going to cut off the yarn just for this piece. like that and make another one of these okay so we've got both panels of the sweater and of course froggy so i'm going to now show you how to sew up the sweater and make the sleeves and the neck so we're going to start by slip stitching to secure both pieces obviously don't cut the yarn Unless you already have. In that case, I apologize. Um, for not saying too sooner. And then I always chain one. Now we're going to... See how I have this here as well? You want to make sure... We're going to be turning the whole sweater inside out. So make sure you've got the ugly side out right now the pretty side in <laughs> all right so along the top here i'm gonna slip stitch them together four times so there's one two three and four now we're gonna slip stitch only into this panel until four remain so we're just going to do one two three four one two three four that math worked out nicely so now we're going to go back into both so the fourth from the end slip stitch slip stitch and all the way to the end Okay, see, we now have his whole 
for the head. Now, we're gonna do the sleeves. So, in one of the panels only, we're gonna slip stitch down one, two, three, four. Join it like so. And we're gonna come back to the sleeves themselves. So for now, slip stitch in both sides. All the way down to the rim. This sweater pattern is actually inspired by a sweater I made a long time ago for myself. It's a very basic sweater pattern, in my opinion. Just like two rectangles and some sleeves. All right, now once we're at the bottom, you're just gonna do slip stitches all the way across in one side of the panel. So I'm gonna do this front side. I promise once we like flip it around, it's gonna look a lot neater, which is why we wanna turn it inside out at the end. I'm sorry, I'm very out of frame, aren't I? As per usual. I feel like my brown yarn that I made this pattern with last time was much easier to work with. This stuff keeps splitting on me and being annoying. Okay. There we go. Now we're gonna join these again, both pieces with another, you guessed it, slip stitch. And we're gonna keep going until we have another hole that is four spaces wide. All right, there's the other sleeve hole. You can just eyeball it, honestly. Now I'm gonna do this sleeve. This part is not no so really at all because we are gonna do the sleeve, cut the yarn, do that sleeve, cut the yarn, and then do the neck and cut the yarn. But this way we avoid cutting it as much as possible. If you have a better way to do it, be my guest. So to do the sleeves, we're just doing rows of single crochet. So just single crochet all around this opening. It should be around six stitches. You're just going to keep doing rows. This is my second row into each of those single crochets until you get the sleeve length that you want. I might do five rows, I think. This will be row three. These sleeves are very not fun to uh, flip inside out, but I definitely think it's worth it for the clean look it gives them. All right, and this is four, I believe. All 
I think four might be perfect. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do four just so that his hands can poke out nicely. Just like that. So I'm gonna sec I'm gonna secure this. Is that what I'm trying to say? Yeah, with a slip stitch, chain one. We're gonna cut the yarn and I'm gonna hide the end inside because again, as I've mentioned, I'm not weaving ends in for this project. I mean, an easy solution to that would just be, since we're turning it inside out, pull the end down through one of these random stitches in the sleeve so that it kind of stays hidden inside the body. And I am gonna cut it a little bit shorter now that I've done that. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side with attaching the yarn. So I'll be back when I've done that for the other little sleeve. So our little sweater is almost finished. We're gonna turn it inside out now. And this is gonna be a fun journey, so we're gonna go on it together. <laughs> By fun, I mean tedious, but it'll be worth it, I promise. If you don't feel like turning it inside out or anything, that's fine, but my crocheting is honestly, when I'm not making stuff for markets or selling, pretty carefree, so I'm just shoving the sleeves through one by one. And yes, we are doing this before we do the neck because I like to do the neck while it's on the frog. And it also looks good when it's already right side in. So look at how adorable the little sweater is. And as you can see, it looks very good. In terms of like seams and everything it looks really neat i'm just gonna cut this one string trim it up obviously again weave in if you feel like it i personally do not we're gonna grab little froggy here and we're gonna put him into his sweater this is the fun part so oh i love the fit of this one it's so much better than the last one i made with the other pattern so this is the tricky part is getting his arms through but again it's the fun part as well so i'm not too worried about it i'm just going in from like the back and shoving his fingers through we're gonna pull it oh so cute i did snag my yarn a little bit but that's all right again homemade Handmade. Oh, I found a string. Okay, and the other one. I really want to try doing overalls sometime. I think that would be super adorable. But I don't really think I have blue right now. That would be the right size of yarn for this little guy. Oh, it looks so good. Okay. We are now obviously going to tuck this string in. And I'm going to do his little neckline here, even though this one doesn't need it as much as the last one I made because it was a bit big on him. I'm just going to do a row of single crochet around his neck here. It honestly makes it look kind of like a turtleneck too, which I think is just peak cuteness. Can you hear my Alexa downstairs? <laughs> it's actually my parents Alexa. So just gonna attach the yarn however I please because again not selling this we're just doing it for fun so I'm just gonna knot it if you want to know how to properly join yarn. Again this is not the tutorial for you. There's plenty of that out there though. So, just gonna chain one here and start single crochet. Trying to get into every stitch of the neck without, you know, sewing it onto the frog. That's not ideal. Then he won't be able to get a sweater off. I definitely want the clothes to be removable just so if I want to make different ones like striped sweaters, overalls, you know, 
different clothes. <laughs> I can interchange them as I please. Ugh. This yarn. I don't know what brand it is or else I'd tell you not to buy it. It was given to me by a family member. They didn't... It was theirs. But I'm very grateful nonetheless because it's adorable. As you can see, that's how it's looking. Just gonna keep going around here. Of course, you can skip that if you this part if you want to. That goes for the whole video. Pretty sure I mentioned that already. I really want to do a black and white striped frog sweater. And I also would like to try and make a pattern for the cats wearing sweaters. Because I also think those are really cute. And I, I do think it's going to be a lot more challenging for me to design the pattern. This one, honestly, I had a lot of trial and error. Like, I almost wish I had documented the prog like the progress of it because... Oh my goodness, it would make you guys probably appreciate my uh, pattern more, even though it's not exactly perfect. Just because of how many trial and errors I did on it. Okay. And I'm just going to do one more single crochet right here. Before slip stitching back into the first bit. chaining one, and cutting with my nail scissors, because <laughs> that's all I've got on hand. All right, everybody, I think that that is our little frog in a sweater all complete. You can play with his little fingers here and make them, you know, spread out. Same with the feet. They will naturally curl, though, just because that's how they are, but I think that makes them cute. Position his arms like that. And look at him. Just so adorable. Obviously, the sweater is removable, so you can take it on and off if you want. But I think this is mine all finished. I like them sitting up. They're cute. I have mine sitting on my shelf back at school all right so that is the tutorial all finished and i really hope that this was helpful for you guys i provided you with something that you know isn't really out there on the internet and i hope that you guys get some inspiration from this uh as much as i did because i've shown this frog to many people and they all think it's adorable and i really really hope that you guys feel the same way so again Thank you for bearing with me during this tutorial <laughs> and I really, really hope that you love this frog as much as I do. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and go watch some of our other videos because we don't only make tutorials over here, we make tons of crochet themed videos. So there's lots for you to see. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye!